All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to be setting up a gardening store from scratch using Shopify. Now, even if gardening isn't exactly your thing, no worries. You can still follow along and apply the same steps to build any kind of store you're into. And if you don't have Shopify yet, I've included a link in the description. You can get yourselves a three day free trial. And after that, it's just a dollar a month for your first three months. So with all that being said, how about we get into it? So when you guys log into your Shopify account, you're going to find yourselves at the dashboard. Now from the dashboard, I want you to head to the left hand side where we have products and then hit on add product. So the first thing we have on the list is the title. Then down below, we have the description. You can write it yourselves or use the AI to help you generate something yourself. It always helps me when I'm out of ideas. Underneath here, we have the uh, the media. So this is where we transfer over our photos down where it says pricing. Of course, this is self-explanatory. This is just how much this item costs. And then for the quantity, this is where you input your stock. If I could just get that number right. My one isn't working. So there we go, 100. And then in the variance, you can tie this together with your category meta fields. So what this does is it identifies the item's color. So what Shopify's AI does, it takes a look at all the things that you've given it, all the information, the photo, the description, title, and then generates some meta fields for it. And so how this helps us is we can use these uh, meta fields to create variants. So we can use the variants that it says for blue. We can also add some, so we can be like uh, silver. And you can also include your own underneath. So you can go to add another option and then the size or length rather. And I believe this is 15 feet. Yeah. So we can just say 15 feet. All right. And then you save your changes once you're done. And that is all you need to do when it comes to adding products or adding information to your products. Now let's go down to the collections tab and go to the top right and click on create collections. So what we're going to do here first is we're going to name it. And then over here, you can add a picture for a thumbnail. And then where it says manual, we're going to go down to browse and choose the items for this particular collection. So you just check off all of these boxes. And then once you're done, all you do is click add and then save it. Now let's head down to the content tab and talk about menus. So uh, to add things to your menu, all you do is go down to add menu item, go to the right where it says search or paste link, head to our collections, and then you just repeat that process. As for your footer menu, it's a little different. I mean, the process of adding things is the same. All you have to do is go to settings, head to policies at the bottom, and then input your own information into this text box. But you can also use the template to help you figure out a blueprint of how things are supposed to go. When you're done with that, go to your footer menu, click on add menu item, and instead of collections, go down to policies and then repeat that process we did for the main menu. Once you guys are done with that, I want you to head down to the online store tab and immediately click on customize right here. But first, actually right click on it and open this link in a new tab while I remove this other tab. And then let's make our way to this one. OK, so let's dig into it. Now, the first thing we're going to change is the header. So for that, we got to go to the left hand side and then go to logo and favicon and transfer over our photo into that. And once that has been uploaded, it will show up in the top left. And to change the position of the logo, we can click on the logo itself, or rather we can change the size of the logo by clicking on the logo itself. But to change the position of the logo, we have to click on the header and then go to center. And we have all these options of where to place it, but centers for me, position there, and then you can place it where you want it in terms of what row it belongs in. Now, for our banner image, what we'll do is click on it, go to the right hand side, and then transfer over the photo, which has already been added. And like our logo, we just selected, click on done. From our settings, we go down here and we're going to keep it vertical, but I want to place it in the center of the page. So center and then down here, position it in the center. And there we have it. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is our product list. So for our product list, we have all the products we just added to our site. So what we can do here is I want to actually change this from a grid to a carousel. There we go. So for that, what I can do is go to type and change the carousel. And now customers can swipe rather than scroll. And if we go to full screen, you can see how that looks. Now, there's an arrow here somewhere. 
and this allows us to scroll through all the items. However, there's not many items to scroll through, and for the life of me, I can't find the arrow again. So what we can do for that is give a little icon to the, to the arrow so that we can actually see where it is, which helps. And then you saw that white uh, side or blank white space over here. And we're gonna change that by going to where it says width and make it full width. And now you'll see how it actually took up that blank space. As for the items, we can increase the product count by going to product counts and increasing it as such. And then when we go back over here, you'll see that we have more products added to our store. Now, the images aren't cropped the best way. So what we can do is either get better images or we can make do with what we got by going to media over here and now it's in portrait if you go to auto you'll see how it actually crops it better so it really depends on your photos in the first place but in this case we're safe because the pictures were already cropped well enough so the uh, auto feature works well enough now to change text you can simply click on the box as such and then over here you can input your contents all right now this text is a little too large so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to typography preset and change it to heading two uh, the higher you go on these headings the smaller the text is now underneath this we're going to add another section and you can see how this prompt shows up so we're going to add a section and go down to collection lists so to add a collection all you have to do is go to the top right where it says collections and then include all of the collections you want to add. So again, our photos aren't cropped properly, so we have to improvise. And the way we can do this is by going to collection card on the left, clicking on image, and then going to auto or any of the other options that are there. Now, underneath the collection, we're gonna add a banner image and an image with text section. So what we're doing here is first off, adding this hero, which is what the banner is called on this template. And then first off, let's change this text. I have something ready to go in my clipboard and then go down to change the size to heading two. The image can be changed as well by going back to our library and then updating that. Now I wanna remove this text and then I'll go over to the left-hand side to remove the button because buttons can be finicky. You click on it and then it takes you to the different page. And that's not what we're trying to do. Now the image itself is too large, so let's go down to the right hand side where it says height and make it small. And then underneath this, we're going to add that image with text section. It should be somewhere near the bottom right here. Now on the left hand side, let's update our photo. And we already have the picture. We added the product earlier. So now the text is left. So let's update the, uh, the description. And over here is gonna be the title. And now let's just center all of this by clicking on the actual container and then making it centered. Now for this link, let's go to the button and link it to this particular product. So it's very similar to what we did with the menus. We just find the product and then link it as such. And there you go. That is all you need to do. Now I'm going to repeat this process one more time with another item. All right. So with that taken care of, let's go back to our previous tab and head down to settings. Now, until you buy a Shopify plan, you will not be able to start receiving payments and accepting orders. But when you do, you'll have something that shows up looking like this. And all you do is complete account setup. You simply input all the information that Shopify requires, fill out the fields. It's a very straightforward process. There's even steps up here. And by the end of it, you will be able to start accepting orders. Next up, I want you guys to go to shipping and delivery. So click on this first option and I want you to remove this zone first by clicking on these three dots and clicking on deletes. Now, make sure you save this and once you're done, go down to the bottom of the page and click on go to markets. Now, after that, go to the top right, create market and choose whatever country you want, but first name it. So we're going to call this test and go to condition. And in this case, I'm going to ship to the United States only. All right. So click on United States, click on done, save it. And then it's going to ask you to go back to the markets to set up your shipping rates, which we will do. Now, what you do is go back to the first option and then go to add rate and you simply name it. So we're going to call this rates T and then down below you give the price for this rate 
and that is pretty much all you have to do to set up a new shipping zone. Now to publish your store, you're not gonna be able to do that unless you buy a Shopify plan because it says right here, you have to pick a plan. But when you do buy a plan, you're gonna see this instead and you can go to remove password at which point your store is public and you can start selling things. And that just about wraps up today's video, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section down below. I will also have a link to my longer Shopify tutorial that goes into more depth if you would like to see that as well. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And do not forget about that link in the description for that three day free trial and a dollar per month for three months Shopify deal. At any rate, thank you all so much for watching as always. And until next time, make sure to take care.